Okay, so I was wondering where the social message was actually going to come in, and it's a message of addiction, which we get that a lot on American Horror Story, the message of addiction. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for American Horror Story Double Feature. This is season 10, episode two, which is actually titled Pale. This was the rollout first week. It's the first week they gave us, Brad and Ryan gave us two episodes. Both of them were like 70, 71 minutes. It was a lot. It was a lot of content, a lot of stuff to unpack. Um, a lot of trying to, you know how American Horror Story does. You you got to grab your hold and kind of figure out where it is you're going to be sitting, how you're going to sit there, and what it's going to give. And that's what it was. And, and I think I got my bearings on this part. It's a double feature. So there's some more to come. There's some more to come. And trust me, from the previews, We're going to go down that realm that I don't like. I do not like aliens. I'm not a sci-fi person, but for Ryan, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll see where he's going. I'm going to take the journey, okay? But it's going to get deep. It's going to get deep. They're going to play with the president and a whole bunch of other stuff. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about Pale, which is episode two of this rollout of American Horror Story double feature. So listen, addiction. Addiction is what is the deal here, okay? Um, a lot of talk about opioids, a lot of talk about uh, drug abuse for the most part, but with the American Horror Story spin. So listen, Alma, Alma actually tells she tell, I told you all, Alma is a busybody, okay? She just is. She's snarky. She And, and a lot of the things that I said about her in my, my first review, you're going to see. I was right. I was right. Miss Alma. Oh, Miss Alma is a piece of work, okay? It's a piece of work. But she tells. She tells Doris. I saw him taking some type of appeal. And Doris confronts him. And because it was so weird, they were literally in the car getting ready to leave. He took the pill. They were getting ready to leave. They got everything all packed. And as they sit there, he starts getting these flashes. And he's like, I can see it. I can see the whole thing. I need my computer right now. And she's like, right now, like, man, if you don't go on and get on this road, what are you talking about? He gets out the car. He gets his laptop and he heads back into the house. And he starts typing. Four hours later, he's literally written a full pilot in four hours. And then she's questioning him, and he basically lashes out at both of them. <clears throat> the daughter, he's, he says to her, don't be jealous because you can't play whatever that little song that she keeps trying to play on her violin. And she just like broke out into tears as she wrote because she's really been struggling. But the piece is really so far ahead of what her skill set really is. The, the fact of the matter is she is definitely talented. She's talented. She has all the makings of a childhood protege for someone else. But again, I told you that there's a lot of similarities between him and her she's his daughter he there's a narcissist that lives inside of him that is just not that nice very very uh very that okay and he just he just he, he scraped her he scraped miss alma honey and she went off crying of course doris snaps out she snaps out like how dare you you know what i mean it was, it was totally out of order. 
that he would do that. And soon after he did it, he felt a little bit bad, brother. Just a little bit bad. I think he felt worse about the fact that she was crying, but he meant every word he said. Don't be jealous. He was really tooting his own horn, that whole thing. So then after that, he continues on. He's gone all day, just like this constant writing, writing, writing. He, he, he has not stopped. And she ends up saying, you know, you, you have to eat. You need to eat something. She went to the market. Her and Alma went to the market, comes back. She gives him this turkey sandwich. And it literally makes him sick. I said, oh, see, because every, every medication, rather be recreational or something that you need, has a side effect. And for whatever reason, the turkey made him sick. And um, she's fussing. He says, okay, I'll go, to, I'll just go. She's like, I smelled it was fine, whatever. He said, I'll just go to the market. I'll get something. He leaves out of the house. He goes to go down to the market. Okay. And as he's out there, he ends up seeing some of these, these little tick, you know, these little people, these little pop snap people. And before long, he's literally surrounded by them. There's about five or six of them. They surround him. And then it's like they get a whiff of him and they just back off. They just back off. He gets down to the market. Mikey knows right away because he's over there in the red meat counter. And he's like, what's going on? He said, oh, just, just had a, um, got a craving. And he's like, mm, mm. Got rid of that writer's block too, huh? This, that thing, and the other. Mikey knows exactly what's going on. And then boom, up, up pops Karen. And Karen cusses him out. Why did you do that? You thirsty? You thirsty now? I told you to st not to do it. This I told you to stay away from all of that. She's snapping out. He's looking at her like she's crazy. He goes home. He ends up taking and like he's squeezing the blood out of this meat. And then he literally and that's what that's my thing. He has this this craving. It's a craving at this point, and this urge. He ends up pureeing this meat and just drinks it. It's like packs and packs and packs of red meat. Disgusting. Drinks it down, and then he feels better. Now, of course, Dor Doris doesn't see all this. She's upstairs. Her and Alma are talking. Doris and Alma speaking. She's saying to her about these fabrics. She's like, do you see these, these two fabrics? You know, she's, you know, wanting... Wanting what she does to be interesting. But Alma doesn't find it interesting at all. She said it looks, they both look the same. One of them feels like burlap and the other one just feels like you would just slide right off of. She's like, you know what? Enough, enough, you know? And I said, you know, it's this, there's a narcissism that they use against each other, but not Doris. Doris doesn't have it. It is definitely um, Harry and Alma. They are, they're exceptional at what they do. They're, they're truly talented people. Doris is normal, if you will. She, she just, Doris, you know, she's just regular. She's nothing exceptional. And baby, the narcissism is running real high up in this house. I said, this is too much. So that's that. Later on, we actually see that evening, we see Belle and Austin have writ written past the house. They're keeping tabs. They're keeping tabs. And Austin says, you know, um, he's going to have to get a better diet. He's going to have to get a better diet. If it's going to sustain, he said, I, I remember that. The first burst of creativity is just wonderful. He said, the muse, that's what we should call the pill. We should call it the muse. So they go on off and, and she says to him, she says, you know what? Aren't you, let's, I'm hungry. Let's go and get something to eat. 
and they have this sinister look between the two of them and they drive one off and I'm like okay so this is very interesting modern day self-made vampires are basically what we're dealing with everything about this is the vampire legend except for it's self-made stuff it's you know the the it's not the biting and then the turning you type of situation it's something else that turns you but the way that they keep tabs on the way that they you know that that whole predatory thing going on i'm like okay no problem whatever so um doris and harry end up getting into it again and she's like, okay, so when are we leaving? He's like, just a few more days, a few more days. She's like, a few more days. She's like, Alma and I are terrified being here. We're terrified. Like, what are you talking about a few more days? You, for God's sakes, you killed a man in the middle of the floor of the study and we're being chased and all these things have happened in like a few days and you're talking about we're going to just stay here another few days. Are you crazy? And he sees the, the the little writing. She sees the writing. She's like, these things are good. But like, I don't know. I'm just, I don't like it here. So in the midst of the, the argument, she cuts her finger. And he's like looking at her. And that craving, baby, he jumps over there and grabs her finger and starts sucking the blood. And she literally had to push him off. She's like, get off of me. You're hurting me. She pushed him off of her. And she's just kind of looking at him. And they're looking at each other real, real crazy. I said, okay. So shortly thereafter, Harry goes to see Austin. And one, Harry doesn't have any more pills. That's that. He doesn't have any more pills. But he goes to see him. And he says, um, they get to talking about the pills and where they came from and all of this. And he says, basically, the pills were created by a chemist who was trying to develop, you know, naturally they were dealing with crystal meth and all of this. There's basically a chemist who was a drug dealer. And they were trying to create something to sell and slid up in some type of way ended up creating this pill. Now, that's the story Austin told. For some reason, I think there's something more to it. I think there's something more to it because the whole self-made vampire thing it says somewhere in there, I swear there's got to be a ritual or something that was done that isn't being talked about. But I'm just going to hold on to that for later. But this is what Austin basically tells him. A chemist basically slipped up and came into it. He don't know exactly what's in it. Just that thing and the other, all this bull. Just, I call BS. I call BS. I say that there's some type of ritual and something supernatural about it as well. Because here's the other thing. If you don't have an abundance of talent, you turn into one of those tweakers. Those tweakers that you see walking around town, they are other creatives that have actually come there who took them. And they didn't, they weren't an exceptional talent. And it basically shows it separates the, the men from the boys. And they literally turn into these mindless weirdos. And they're running around tweaking and carrying on. And people who are really talented, it just amplifies what their talent is. So that's the whole thing. That's that's the chance you take the red pill, blue pill. That's, it's that kind of thing. So I said, hold on, that's interesting. Now, the other thing is it depletes the minerals in your blood that now have to be replaced by some other blood. And it is better being replaced by something that is living. Not what he, that's why he said he had to get a better diet than getting the meat out of the grocery store. You need, it's, you do better by replenishing off of someone or something. More so someone with a heart beat. So he explains it. He's like, oh no, I'm not. I'm not getting into all that. He goes home. He leaves. 
And you know, Austin has his way. Austin's like, oh, Harry! You know, he, he, he's fucking with him. He leaves. He gets home. As he gets back to the house, he gets a phone because he's like, we're, we're just going to leave. Gets a phone call from New York and it's his girl on the phone and she's like, listen, the pay, the pay, she said, Sal, you've been holding out on me, you bastard. You, she said, I got a phone call. She said, I had a conversation with Joaquin Phoenix. He is signed on to the pilot. Period. He said that he would even do it for free. It was so good. The, the script was so good. I have an offer from Netflix. So now at this point, um, Doris is sitting there. She hears Joaquin Phoenix and, you know, they're having this whole celebratory thing. She's like, oh, my God, we're going to be rich. And naturally, you know, that's everybody's. Everybody would love to have a deal with Netflix, okay? So they're celebrating. And he's like, well, we got to. Now I got to do some more writing. You know, I want to do some more writing and, and we're going to get this. We are going to be rich. She's like, okay, no problem. She's like, Joaquin Phoenix, I love him. You're just that the other. She's going on up the steps, okay? He uh, And he also apologized to um, Alma. What I forgot to say, by this time, Alma has actually said twice, what if I take... If I take some of what daddy took, do you think I would be able to play that? You know, that play this piece that she wants to play. And he told her no. She told her no. She go about her business. She goes on about her, her, her way. Boyfriend sits down. He goes to write. Remember, he got no more pills. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's right back where he started. It's worn off. It's just, he's just sitting there and shit just ain't popping. So he slides on out the door. He goes back. He ends up with Belle and Austin. Calls, he tells her, you know, I'm going to go to a writer's, like a little writer's meeting real fast with Belle and Austin. Um, and, and don't be mad. I'm, I'm going to be back. So when he basically was gone, Dan gave him another pill and told him, we're going to go and feed. And they told said, well, wait a minute, well, where do you find these people? He's like, listen, there's two rules. You never feed on anyone in Provincetown because of the the chief of police. She's nebby as hell. And the people, you know, you just, you just don't shit where you eat. You know, that's just the way it is. You don't eat anyone. You don't feed on anyone in Provincetown. And you never take your gloves off. They give them these little leather gloves. And they told, well, he said, well how you do it? They find people on the internet and they basically, the people that they feel are the low of the low, people who people aren't going to miss, people who are drug addicts and people who are slicksters and just folks that are pretty much that they feel are beneath them that nobody's going to miss. So basically they end up going to this guy's house who was uh, going to sell some, it was like random things he was selling off of Craigslist. They get there to the place. It was a whole mess, chow. They get there and the guy's like, oh, well, do you want to, um, he's having like small conversation with them, having old Belle roll up in there. See, Belle's a G. She rolled up in there. She gonna say, enough talking. Mommy's hungry. Shh. And she slid his goddamn throat. I said, oh, Belle. Baby, and they ate him on that, honey. They took their little flippers off and they went in there and let him have it. And... As they were coming back, she's telling him, she said, we're going to have to send you to see Dr. Feldman because you had a messy, a messy feeding. We're going to have to send you to get your teeth sharpened. So they literally are getting their teeth sharpened like that on purpose. And Dr. Feldman, she's a female doctor in town who actually does it. I said, oh my God, okay. So in the midst of all that, while all of that's going on, we got Karen and old boy who is actually being played by, and he... It's Macaulay Culkin that's actually playing the little hustler, the little gay hustler boy. Well, we come to find out he actually is a writer. He's a writer. And Karen is actually an artist. She's an artist. And they go back and forth. Karen has seen everything for the most part. She knows the ins and outs of what's going on. Uh... Macaulay's part, he don't really know all the dirt, but he has two pills that he has actually stolen from Belle 
while he was in the midst of, you know, he's a hustler child. He didn't sweat and got him, honey. He had asked her, girl, are you contagious with whatever's going on with you? You contagious? She's like, no, as long as we don't, like, fuck her or anything, then I don't think we're, I don't know what she has. I don't know exactly what she has. It's like she's has, like, some, she has some type of a disease. There's something going on with her. And she's like, you know, I haven't been touched by a man in 15 years. It's that thing or the other. But they look over. He actually has some of her paintings. He's like, no, you have some talent. In. But then that's the thing. He's like, wouldn't you, don't you want to be, like, famous? She's like, yeah. And for a moment, they go back and forth. Where she's saying, like, the thing. She's like, I would make all these assholes pay. She said, I would buy that whole store that market and just burn that bitch to the ground and just make them all pay. And she said, I thought my paintings, she said, those are my paintings that were in the house because he had let her in the house. She said, um, those are my paintings. I, I thought that they were just trashed. I did those at a little thing. He's like, no, I, like, I think they're very good. They make me feel something. And he's basically vouching to the talent that she has. He was saying how he had all these composition books where he had written stuff. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know if they're really all that good or whatever, but I think they're good. So they go back and forth, and she's like, but I just can't do it. The sacrifice is too much. The things I've seen, the things that Bell makes me do, I cannot be one of them. I just can't. I can't do it. And you shouldn't do it either. He's like, I want it. I want the fame. I want to be, you know, good. I want, I want it. And so he ends up taking a pill, and she doesn't. And later in the episode, we actually see him. He's pumping out this work. So he truly is actually talented. Um, we didn't see Karen anymore. I don't know what, where Karen went. So that's that. So we'll just hold off. I'm sure we'll see more of them in episodes to come. So that's that. But he's over there pumping out. He's writing. He's doing his thing. Um, like I said, Dr. Feldman and Harry had a little date. He goes right on to Dr. Feldman. And I'm like, he's so open. Again, he's such a narcissist and he's so hungry for this fame and this money. There's a greed in it as well. He goes and he does it. Now, at the house, the wife is kind of breaking down because she's feeling overwhelmed about having to, to redo this whole house. And she had a conversation with him. You know, she was kind of telling him, you know, like, my work is important. Like, my work is important, too. And he's like, yeah, I mean, okay. Okay. And he comes back, and they have some interaction, and he, he wasn't the nicest. He really wasn't. He wasn't the nicest. By this time, Alma has snuck it into her dad's bag, and she's gotten a pill, and she's taken herself a pill. And she has played and played and zoo, 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 she got the piece. She's just blowing it out. Now she's a child. So her body is a little bit different. There was a point in her mother, you know, she's pregnant. She's stressed. She over to sleep. She ain't paying Alma no attention. Alma's sitting there, baby. And Alma that fell out in the floor, just stretched out. Boom, just fell out. After, I guess, you know, she, she did her thing. She, she done fell out. And before anything, she wakes back up and her mother figures it out. And then she, they're going back and forth. Now she's done. She's done. And she's trying to play and it ain't going like it was going before because it done wore off, okay? So, and a quick, it was faster in Alma. I guess, again, because she's a child. So it kind of, uh, their, their little, you know, their little bodies moving. So it had really ran through her a bit. So she was back and it was like, not like it should be. And then her and Doris ended up having this exchange and honey, she says, okay, she says, Alma, you've been really playing like all day. She said, I, I have to keep practicing. You don't understand. I need to keep practicing. She says, but it sounds fine. She says, see, it sounds fine to you because you're not talented like myself and daddy. You don't understand because you're common. And I said, oh my God. And she told her, she's like, 
So um, she's like, I mean, yes, you are talented. Your dad is talented, and I am too. She's like, are you? And she said, I do a lot of things, Alma, and I'm, you don't feel like I'm a good mother? And she says, well, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be me if I didn't tell you that I would be who I am no matter who I was with. I could be with some just regular Joe, any other regular person, and I would still be who I am, and you still wouldn't understand greatness. But I would be so much better with someone else who was perfectly suited like me and Daddy, and not common like you. And she said, you're like normal. And child, she took her violin and told her, you go. Go, you're on, you're grounded. You go to your room. Maybe she's crying. She had hurt her little feeling. I said, see, that little narcissism in her. And the pill really does just pushes it forward. So by this time, you know, that's that. She ends up crying herself back to sleep. She wakes up again. By this time, she's down there. She goes downstairs. And um, old boy is back at it this morning. She's, he's back at it. He's doing his thing. And she says, well, um, she's looking for Alma, and she can't find Alma. It's the next day, so she can't find her. She gotta feed her, it's like breakfast time. And he ain't fed her. She's looking for her. She says, where's Alma? He says, oh, she she went on outside to take a walk. He says, to take a walk? Are you crazy? And they go back into this argument. We're being chased. You killed a man on the floor, and you let your nine-year-old daughter just go out walking. She's like, I'm going to go get Alma and we're leaving. And we're leaving your ass here. Like, it, this is just ridiculous. We're leaving. He told her, you do this every time you're pregnant. Every time you're pregnant, you lose your mind. You're just ridiculous. And she was like, what? She's like, okay, I'm out of here. So she goes outside. She goes looking for Alma. She's looking, looking, looking. She walks and walks and walks. It's getting real eerie. She gets all the way down there by the cemetery. She sees three of the little tweakers at him. And then she looks over and she sees Alma. And Alma's bent down over a grave. And she's like, Alma? Because they're like, you know, she's like, child, you know they get ready to chase this child. We got the roll. And she's like, Alma, baby. And Miss Alma turns around, honey. And her face is all bloody because she over there eating something. Something that was living. She over there eating. And all I seen was it was chewed up, baby. And it had fur on it. I said, Ugh, Miss Alma, you nasty little buzzard, honey. And she just was looking at her. I said, you're not like her and daddy. A mess. Listen, I am so here for this. I don't know how I'm going to do with the alien stuff, but these little self-appointed vampires and things, I'm here for this. This is very interesting. But I told you all, Alma was going to be an issue for me. Alma's a mess. She's a whole mess over there eating furry stuff, you little nasty little buzzard. Anyway, but that's it. That is it for the opening. It has been a heck of a week with American Horror Story. Listen, thank you, Brad and Ryan. I've been thoroughly entertained, thoroughly entertained, and I'll see you guys next week. Later.